with uh, my analysis of William Irwin Thompson's At the Edge of History, Values and Conflict Through History. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, we've had this whole, we've gone over how civilization has grown into all these um, different parts and quadrants from the germplasm of a tribal civilization. And what we're going to do here is, in this slide, I'm going to show you again the, the basic tribal germplasm of four quadrants, and I'm going to put in there rather than, you know, saying that this is the, you know, this is where the chief goes and the, this is where the, the shaman goes and all that kind of stuff, and, and talk about the outgrowths. Here, what we're going to do is put in um, three terms into each quadrant um, that are drawn from Plato, Young, and Yeats. All right, Plato, we know who Plato is. Don't have to go into that. M most people who have studied uh, late 19th century psychology and, and philosophy know who Young is. And of course, Yeats is the writer who, who wrote a book that Thompson based all these ideas on in the first place. So let's look at the four quadrants again and look at the terms used to describe them. In the lower right quadrant, this is where your, everything came from. It's where the hunters originally came from. This is, again, as I described earlier, this is the large body of people for whom the other three quadrants grow around in order to try to control and manage the body of people. So you can see there's three terms in there, body, shadow, and body of fate. So uh, in terms of Plato, he calls this the body. Jung calls this the shadow, our shadow selves. And Yeats refers to this as the body of fate. Um, up in the executive upper right-hand quadrant, we have daemon, self, and creative mind. Again, three terms used by these three philosopher writers to describe what that area of our psychology is, the parts of ourself. This is the side of us that wants to grow out of the body of fate and the shadow to come to some kind of um, determination of self, which Plato calls the daemon, and the creative mind uh, that Yeats refers to. We're trying to grow out of our, the, what we um, would call, you know, the, what would normally be cast into the, the body of fate, our, our, our fate without any reason, you know, without any sense of selfhood coming out of us. All right, moving over to the upper um, left quadrant. Um, this is the area that would be inhabited by the shaman and then later religion, and then later education. This, uh, the three terms here to describe the psychological aspect of this quadrant are reason, ego, and will. And basically this is the area that is trying to reason with the conflict happening between self and shadow, or the conflict happening between creative mind and body of fate. Um, or daemon and body. So the, the reason, the ego, and the will, all right, are trying to, this is, this is where religion and education grew out of. It grows out of that part of the self that is looking for a reason why all this life stuff happens. Finally, that now where the clown goes in the lower left quadrant, um, Plato, Young, and Yeats refer to this area of ourselves the clownish self, the side that wants to criticize everyone else. That is the heart, the anima, and the mask. All right, and, and that makes a lot of sense. This is where, after, after we see all the people in the body of fate having their, their fate experience, after seeing people in the executive realm having their creative mind and self-determination, and after having witnessed the people going after reason ego and will, the people down here finally are looking at their heart and they are expressing themselves through something called the anima, that's Jung's term, and the mask, Yeats's term. 
and this is basically it's it's our it's the part of ourselves that is actually most human um, it, it, again it's 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 reacting against the other realms in the same way that the other realms react against the other realms but in but in this case this is where the real you know the heart of the human soul the really is it's 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 the part of us that wants to the part of our mind that wants to get out of the mind and go all right what's you know that deserves criticism that should be laughed at that you know that's that's the heart the anima and the mask all right um Going from here, what I'm going to do is we're going to stick again with the um, basic uh, four-quadrant germplasm to show now how politics and contemporary society is or how it works. Um, what are the four value orientations in politics and contemporary society? So here again is our four-way germplasm. What I did here is I'm putting into the four quadrants rather than, you know, what would normally... I'm taking the, late, the last stage, which was industrial civilization, and I'm putting those into the four quadrants. So it's industry, government, education, and media. And I'm showing how... Um, I'm sort of showing this as though uh, industrial society is a, is a germplasm itself, which it really isn't. Um, rather, I'm just I'm collapsing these four um, corporate systems into the germplasm in order to show you how politics works. Um, so, as you can see, the, the general consensus here is that in government, the the, the initial um, inclination to want to govern other human beings is a conservative value orientation. Many libertarians and others are going to argue with me on this. They, they hate government and everything. Well, that, it, it doesn't make any sense. The coming out of the masses of people, those people who want to lead and govern, those, that's a conservative value orientation. Um, in the lower right quadrant, where we have industry, this, this is where most of the people who would be considered reactionaries in our society tend to be. Um, they're, they're powerless in the, in the other three quadrants, okay? They're, they're where most people are in the lower right quadrant. And they are reacting to what is going on in the other three quadrants. Um, I, it, this becomes a little complicated because when people say, um, you know, when I say that um, when these growths happen, they always happen from the bottom right quadrant and work their way counterclockwise, well, what the reactionaries are reacting against is the inner germplasm that is oppressing them. They're trying to break out with a new lower right quadrant to create a new way of living, a new way of, li of organizing society, tribal, um, agricultural, industrial, okay? The reactionary um, quadrant is where new things, always, a new way of doing things is going to break out. And then the other three quadrants have to start to cycle up again of finding their space and their particular institutional specialty within all of this. All right, I hope, you're, I hope this makes sense. Um, okay, education. Um, this uh, upper left quadrant, this, is, this tends to be where most of the liberal value orientation in our society is. Liberals tend to gravitate toward this institution. Not a lot of explanation that needs to happen there. That, pro that probably makes a lot of sense to, to, to most of you. And then finally, um, media um, is where most of... Now, this is, is going to seem a little strange to some people, but this this actually makes sense. Um, this is where the radical value orientation is. Okay, the, the radical value orientation is the clown in the tribe criticizing or mocking others. That, that, is, that was the original radical, was this clown in, in the tribe. Um, now, you could see that in the same way of let's say, um, you know, what was going on in the 1968 Democratic National Convention with 
um, where Abby Hoffman and Jerry Rubin were actually playing this role. They were being the clown of that whole, you know, they were, they were um, trying to be a media clown to show how bad the Vietnam War was and how corrupt the, you know, the, the political parties were and everything. So, so uh, radical, people with a radical value orientation tend toward the media. All right, um, the next slide is going to, um, what I'm going to do here is break apart these four quadrants because I'm going to, I'm going to put some stuff in between. I'm creating like a cross. I'm, I'm, I'm exploding the circle and, and breaking the quadrants out. And I'm going to show you now um, how, where between government, education, media, and industry, or between liberals, conservatives, radicals, and reactionaries, where there are places of agreement or sharing. In other words, where certain a certain um, kind of information or way of seeing things is being shared between groups in order to um, to ameliorate the the tension that happens between these four quadrants. So. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you here is that between conservatives and reactionaries or between government and industry, these groups share industrial culture. All right, so to, to explain this a little more, what, I'll go ahead and I'll put the four, um, the four shares between the, the four value orientations up on the screen and then maybe I'll quote a little from Thompson to make this more clear. But the sharing of industrial culture basically means that, you know, when the new industry was created, the government had to get in on the picture to, oh, okay, what's going on here? There's a new thing breaking out that makes the the king and state no, you know, irrelevant. So we form this government, and so we have to share the industrial culture of the reactionaries of the, of the people in industry. So that's what government does. Government and industry shares industrial culture. Um, the neck that um, between conservatives and liberals, or between government and education, there is a sharing of technology. Okay, technology is the thing. It, it the technology makes it possible to overcome what is going on down down in the lower right quadrant or, or even in the lower left quadrant with radicals and reactionaries. Um, the sharing of technology brings a sense of ontos, which is a word you'll see uh, in, in a later slide up here, where I'm going to show you value orientations that are not diagonal but perpendicular, um, like this cross that you'll see in the middle here. The, these four texts are going to form like a cross. Um, all right, so the sharing of technology between liberals and conservatives. Between liberals and radicals, or between education and media, there is a sharing of informational culture. All right, now that's different than the sharing of technology or the sharing of industrial culture. Informational culture is simply that it's like saying that these two groups share the ideas of putting things out in. Uh, magazines, periodicals, uh, anything that has to do with the, the sharing of their, you know, the things that they value the most. So media will share things with education and education will share, will want their ideas posted in the media. So it was, there's this sharing of informational culture. And then finally the two lower realms of left and right, the radicals and reactionaries, or the media and the industry, share a belief in the use of force, a belief in force, okay? Now that, that's not saying that these two sides, you know, it means like they want to get out their guns to use force or something like that. Rather, they, they, they believe that between radicals and reactionaries, in other words, we're looking at these two groups, rea um, Let's say, let's look at it in, again in terms of like, say, the chaos that was going on during the 1968 um, convention. You had radicals uh, 
linked to the media and reactionaries linked to industry, which would be like your Nixon hard hats and stuff, they were both creating chaos out in the streets and they shared a belief in force. The, the, the hippie radicals um, believed in we're going to go, to, we're going to march down the street, we don't give a shit and we're going to cause this, um, this stink. And the reactionaries um, tied to industry, the, your, the Nixon hard hats and stuff, were reacting against that and it was creating chaos. Now, of course, you had, it was, it was governmental, uh, city and state government police that were doing the bashing, but the reactionaries, uh, the hard hats were, were egging that on. So, that, so a share in the belief of force is the common link between radicals and reactionaries. Okay, um, now what we're going to do in this next slide is we're going to talk about the four faculties with their four modes of consciousness. Um, so what I've done here was once more I've taken the tribal germplasm and changed the, the um, labels in them um, basically just to show you you know that where conservative liberal radical and reactionary are and what I'm gonna do here is show you four terms that are used to describe um, these in terms of what our modes of consciousness are rather than as a political orientation 